The Vegas over under win totals are in. And what do they think of LSU this season? I have a feeling you might be a little pleased. We'll get into that plus so much more in today's edition of Locked on LSU. You are Locked on LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, thank you for making Locked on LSU your first listen every single day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. But do not forget, you can also check us out on YouTube as well. So you can listen on the go, listen on your preferred podcast platform. But hey, throw us up on your smartphone, your smart TV, on your computer. Bring up YouTube, just search Locked on LSU into the search bar, and you can check us out so you won't miss a single second of your Locked on LSU content. My name is Caroline Fenton, and I am your host, as I am every single day. You can follow me on Twitter at Caroline Fenton One, or you can follow along with the podcast at Locked On LSU. Just appreciate you for being here. Appreciate you for interacting with the podcast, and always appreciate you for making Locked On LSU your first listen every single day. It's here, people. Vegas has released the over/under win totals for every SEC team going into this season. And I always think this is interesting because it gives me a good barometer of what everyone else thinks about your team. It doesn't have to, it's not LSU specific. What everyone thinks about just teams around college football, teams around the SEC, teams around the league, because we all have our own perceptions of LSU football. We know LSU football. We love LSU football. We follow and we cover and we read up on and we listen about LSU football. I always appreciate y'all for doing that. We know the ins and outs of what happened this, this past season. We know the specifics of the talent that this team brought in or even that this team lost to the NFL draft or to the transfer portal. We have a better understanding of what this team is than anybody else, than any other fan base, rightfully so. But I think sometimes any fan of any team in any sport can have a tendency to view their team with rose-tinted glasses, or in this case, purple and gold-tinted glasses, where you might get so caught up in all of the news and the transfer portal and the recruiting and breaking down the games from last season and listening to the press conferences and hearing what everyone else is saying around the city, around the state, around the country. But we may not get a great grasp of exactly what everybody else thinks about your team. That's where these over-under win totals come in. We at least get a good idea of, hey, look, I, I think LSU is going undefeated and is winning the national championship. Kidding a little bit. Um, But what does everybody else think? According to Vegas, they have LSU as a nine and a half win team. That is the over under set for LSU. That's the third best over under win total in the SEC tied with Tennessee. Only behind, you could probably guess it, Georgia at 11 and a half wins and Alabama at 10 and a half. Now, I want to get into the rest of the SEC, the SEC West, what Vegas is thinking about some of the teams on LSU schedule, but I want to focus on LSU now. Set it at nine and a half. And you know what? I think that's fair. Because if you would have asked me last week, what do you think is a fair evaluation of LSU football? What do you think is a fair and unbiased win total for this team. I'd say nine or 10 wins, nine and a half, right on the money. Now, nine to 10 wins is also ambitious. Nine to 10 wins is probably, it's not ideal. Ideal would be 12 wins. Um, 12 wins turns into 13 wins, 14, 15 wins, and ultimate national championship. But, you know, that's ideal. That's what we're all searching for. But I think 10 wins is realistically optimistic if that makes sense. I think that is a realistic win total that is probably on the more positive end of things. But it's at least how I view it. Vegas views that as being a reality. And I can live with that. Of course, at the end of the day, Vegas means nothing. (laughs) Of course, at the end of the day, we all have our perceptions of what these teams are going to be, what LSU is going to be. And then once that 
once the balls kicked off week one, you know, all bets are off, literally and figuratively. Um, but but it, it's at least what we have for now. It's at least what we can go off of for now. That if you think that LSU can be a 10-win team, you're not crazy because Vegas thinks so too. And I think that 9, 10, more so 10, win season, that is the line of demarcation for that was a damn good season. That's the line of demarcation for, okay, no, 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 like you are throughout the season more likely than not have been in conversation for the college football playoff. You're a top 10, top 15, top 25 team in the country, depending on who your wins and who your losses are. I think 10 wins is the line of demarcation of really, really, really solid season. I'm not going to say elite season because an elite season is undefeated in a national title. It's what Georgia had this past season. It's what LSU had in 2019. But a 10-win season is one that I can step away from and say, damn, that was a lot of fun. That was a really, really good season. There's not going to be very many coaches, if any, fired after a 10-win season. So that is uh, what I believe to be the threshold, the separator of the good from the great. And of course, that depends on schedule and strength of schedule. I know we can get into the minutia. We can get to the specifics of everything. But just throw me a bone here. 10 wins, good season. And I think that nine and a half, that, that win total, it's fair for LSU just based off of what we know about LSU, what I know about LSU, the schedule. But I also think that that nine and a half win mark, especially for what it is this year, perfectly kind of encapsulates my thoughts about this team, at least. Because the two teams with nine and a half projected wins are Tennessee and LSU. And I think that those two teams are are kind of similar, um, not in specifics, um, not in the way that both of those programs are going into this season. You know, Tennessee's replacing a quarterback and an offensive coordinator. LSU is not. Um, Tennessee lost two of their top receivers. LSU did not. But I think if you look at his past season, two teams with a lot of questions, two teams with one brand new and one fairly new head coach, Josh Heupel in his second year, um, two teams that people thought could be good but also could be bad, um, exceeding expectations. But And I would say that's fair for, for both Tennessee and LSU. Tennessee was the number one team in the country at one point. I believe the last time that that happened, I was in elementary school. So exceeding expectations, I think, is fair. LSU winning nine games in the regular season, winning the SEC West, beating Alabama, and heading to Atlanta for the SEC championship, those are exceeding expectations. But both Tennessee and LSU, even coming off of seasons with exceeded expectations, there's still a lot of questions. Tennessees are Tennessees, and LSUs, we know what they are. Year two is kind of the prove-it year for the coach. Year one, let's say if it goes great or bad, that is, okay, we have that. Okay, and Brian Kelly had a good season. Great, and we all were pleased. We can all step away from that 2022 season, you know, with an A+. plus. But show it to me that you can do it again. And I think that's the biggest question that a lot of people have with LSU and with Brian Kelly. Can he do it again? Can he continue to build up this team? Can he replace some of the talent that he lost via the transfer portal to the, to the NFL draft? Can he survive a gauntlet of an SEC schedule for the second year, third, fourth, fifth, sixth year? It's fair. It's a totally fair skepticism because – Look at teams like Alabama and the state that that roster is in. Well, that roster, even though the, the, they pulled a quarterback in the transfer portal like two weeks ago and is expecting probably him to be their starting quarterback, even though they're replacing the offensive and defensive coordinators, Nick Saban gets the benefit of the doubt. Nick Saban goes into any season, doesn't matter what's going on, and the expectation is 10 wins. Ryan Kelly does not have that benefit of the doubt quite yet. The skepticism is fair. But Vegas is telling you, look out for LSU. Because Vegas is telling you that they think it's got to be pretty good. And I'm pretty excited about that. And I think you should be too. But coming up next, games that I think that nine and a half over under win total could be hinging on. We'll get into that coming up next. We'll break down LSU's schedule coming up next. But before we do that, I want to tell you about Bilt Bar. 
Built Bar is so freaking delicious. And the best part about Built Bar is if you want a snack and you don't want to sacrifice all the sugar and calories, then you need the best tasting protein bar ever. It's Built Bar. You've got to try it. And if you're like me and you want to make better snack choices, you want to make healthier choices, and you don't want to compromise on taste, then I've got the perfect thing for you because Built Bars and Built Puffs are healthy and they taste amazing. They taste so amazing, in fact, that you don't even think they're good for you. So you've got to try them. And what makes them so good is that they're covered in 100% real dark chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. They taste like a candy bar and they come in delicious candy flavors. We've got churro, peanut butter brownie, cookies and cream. I mean, that sounds like I'm describing candy bars, but these are built bars and they're great for you. Only 130 calories, only four grams of sugar and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you won't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering built bars at built.com, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club while you still can get your specialty flavors at built.com, of course. So head to Walmart, walk to the pharmacy section, grab yourself a box of built bars. You can pick up a four bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. If you're close to a Sam's Club, run in there, grab a 13 bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter puff and churro puff. So delicious. Good for you. You can thank me later. Well, thanks again for making Locked on LSU your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Every day is on the podcast tomorrow. Who has LSU extended offers to in the transfer portal? What are those position groups looking like they're shaping up to be? We'll get into that on tomorrow's edition of Locked on LSU. But we're now breaking down Vegas' over-under win totals that have been set for the 2023 season. Vegas has LSU. The over-under win total at nine and a half. It's fair. I would have said, I think this is probably a nine to 10 win team. Ideally, 10 plus, won nine last year. Build upon that. We know that success indeed is not linear. And I've said it before. I will say it so many times again. But I do wonder. I, I kind of wanted to discuss this with you, with you guys. Go through it. Kind of my own thought process as to what are those games that Vegas is kind of hinging that over-under win total on. There's always that one or a handful of games that could be the hook. You know, that we might expect you to lose to XYZ and ABC, but it's that one game that we're just not quite sure about. So looking at LSU's schedule, of course, we know that they open at Florida, uh, at Florida State, but against Florida State in Orlando, host Grambling, on the road at Mississippi State, host Arkansas, on the road at Ole Miss, on the road at Missouri, hosting Auburn, hosting Army, on the road at Alabama, hosting Florida, hosting Georgia State, and then, of course, hosting Texas A&M to round out the regular season. Here's my hypothesis. Here's my line of thinking, and please tell me if you think anything different. I think the three games, 12 games in a season, nine and a half game win total that you know the three games you know kind of hooks that Vegas could be potentially hinging on one I think is Florida State and I think that's fair there is so much love for Florida State this offseason not going to pretend to be a genius about Florida State but I do know that Florida State last season did not beat a single ranked opponent I do like what I've seen from Jordan Travis he is a bala Um, But everybody's very high on Florida State. That's going to be the game that really sets the season, sets the tone, sets the momentum. So I think that Vegas is looking at that Florida State game really kind of being a toss-up. Because in that week, we won't really know what either of these teams are in 2023. We can take what we've learned from 2022. We can use whatever FPI, you know, algorithm, XYZ, one, two, three kind of scientific method that we like to project how good these teams are going to be, but we truly won't know. But a lot of people, a lot of insiders, college football writers and insiders have all been really high on Florida State and LSU. So I think it's safe to say that Vegas is looking at that game being a little bit of a toss-up. I wouldn't be surprised to see Florida State maybe favored by two in that game, just getting a little bit of the, the home crowd advantage there. I would be shocked to see that spread be any further than three. That, I would call, is a toss-up. So I think Florida State is one of those games that the 9.5 is hinging on. If you think LSU is going to beat Florida State, I would say take the over on the 9.5. If you're 
you're not quite sure about Florida State, don't bet on it. And if you think that Florida State is just going to blow LSU out, you take the under on the 9.5 win total. It's really that, sim- that simple. I think the second game that this is hinging on is Alabama. And I know, I know, I know, I know. The roster and the coordinators, I get it. Alabama's roster is not in great shape. Um, They've got three quarterbacks in that quarterback room that are going to be battling it out. Tyler Buckner, who I expect to be the starting quarterback, just got to Tuscaloosa like a week ago. Um, They're replacing Bill O'Brien and Pete Golding, their offensive coordinators, offensive and defensive coordinators, respectively. Um, So, you know, you're replacing your your signal callers and your uh, your play callers. That's... uh, pretty tough to do and not to mention you're losing your top defensive player in Will Anderson so I know I know about the roster I know about the coaching staff I know everything about Alabama it's on the road at Alabama that's tough you know tally in Alabama's corner it's also really difficult to beat Alabama two years in a row it's not impossible and I'd love for that to happen beat them on your turf beat them on their turf who's big brother now but let's be real here It's tough to beat Alabama two years in a row, and there is a reason why not very many coaches have done that. So I think that that's also hinging on Bama. If you're confident about Florida State and Alabama, take that over on the win total. If you're not, take the under. I think it's really, it comes down to that. And I struggled with that third game. That third game that Vegas just isn't quite sure about. That third game that Vegas just isn't quite willing to give the Tigers, the benefit of the doubt. And I don't know which one it is. I really don't. Part of me thinks it's just, hey, we think you're going to mess up another game around here. Fair to say, since LSU did mess up the Texas A&M game. And Vegas is looking at it and thinking, look, we think LSU is a really, really good team. They have a tough schedule. You know, we'll throw them a bone there. But we just don't think that they're so good to beat everyone on their schedule except Florida State and Alabama. And that's just my interpretation of it. Giving LSU the uh, the extra loss of maybe a Florida or an Auburn or an Arkansas or an Ole Miss or a Texas A&M down the line. Looking at that and saying, we think LSU is just going to drop one of those. Now, looking at those teams... I'm very pleased with what I saw from Texas A&M this past year. That's not to say that Texas A&M couldn't improve this season. Florida, not that worried about it. Come back to this. You know, whenever LSU plays Florida of this upcoming season, come back to this and you can totally cold take me, but not too concerned about what's going on over, over there in Gainesville. Um, Arkansas, a- again, another team that they've got a lot of talent. K.J. Jefferson is uh, is kind of slated to be one of the top quarterbacks, if not the top quarterback in the SEC this year. I don't know. I know that sounds crazy. Maybe it's not crazy crazy, but I'm also not looking at Arkansas and circling it and saying, Arkansas, easy win. Our minds can change. The way that we feel in May, the way we feel in July, the way we feel in August is going to be drastically different than how we feel in October. But I think that Vegas is looking at Florida State, Alabama, and a mess up along the way to be that the 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 path that it got to LSU being a nine and a half win team. And I think it's fair. I also don't like that third game. Kind of feel like if I'm betting on it today, I'm taking that over. I'm taking that over. Because I think that LSU can beat Florida State. I don't think LSU is going to let itself lose to Florida State two years in a row. Losing to Alabama, or excuse me, beating Alabama two years in a row. It's really tough. It is really hard to do. But if you're going to do it, it's going to be in the years where Alabama does not look as dominant as they've looked in the past. You beat Alabama with the best quarterback in college football. Alabama, meaning. You're not going to have him this season. Looking at Ole Miss and Arkansas and Florida and Texas a those are all teams with their flaws. Of course, I know my team better than I know those teams. But looking at the schedule, man, I'm taking the over on the nine and a half. But let's take a look around the rest of the SEC. What does Vegas think about those other teams, the Arkansas, the Texas A&M, the Floridas of the SEC? We'll get into that coming up next. 
Well, thanks again for making Locked in LSU your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. So Vegas has LSU at a nine and a half win over under win total. Georgia leads the way with 11 and a half wins. Call me a hater. I'd be shocked if Georgia goes three years in a row without losing a single regular season game. But crazier things have happened. Um, I I lean toward the under there, but it's fair. I mean, it's totally fair. Georgia's back-to-back national champions. You know, they haven't lost a regular season game in the last two years. It's totally fair. If they would have said it at 10 and a half, everyone would have hammered the over. Um, Alabama is at 10 and a half. Again, I think it's high, but that's the Nick Saban effect. That is the Nick Saban benefit of the doubt. LSU and Tennessee, both at nine and a half wins. That, to me, screams we think that these are great teams. We just have a few more questions about them. We can't quite bump them up to that 10-win mark. And this is the interesting thing. Like, there's a a very obvious drop-off. you got your four teams that Vegas thinks are going to be good, and I also do think are going to be good. And that shows in the win win totals, Georgia, Alabama, LSU, Tennessee, from 11 and a half to nine and a half wins. You've got the teams that Vegas thinks is going to be just truly dreadful, and that is just Vanderbilt and also um, there. But then there's this massive, mushy middle. That's a big drop-off from the top teams and also a big increase from the bottom team in Vanderbilt. Ole Miss and Texas A&M are set at seven and a half wins. Um, I struggle with these teams. I really do. Because Texas A&M last year, everyone told me that they were supposed to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. They didn't even make a bowl game. And then I'm going to hear from Texas A&M fans saying, we beat you. I'm aware. I know that. But you weren't a good team. Um, And the same thing with Ole Miss. I think that Ole Miss with Lane Kiffin is always going to be that 7-8 and win team. They're always going to be that team that plays really well that beats a good bit of conference opponents, but continuously just gets beat by teams that are simply better than them. That's what I see Ole Miss being. I don't honestly see a 10-win season in Ole Miss's near future. I I will believe it when I see it. And also, I I said it a couple times in the podcast, I will couch that again. Anything can happen. Everything and anything can change from now until next month, until August, until September, until November, until the end of the season. Things change. This is just my perception of these teams at this point. So both Ole Miss and Texas A&M at seven and a half wins. And then you've got this massive chunk of teams. Kentucky, Auburn, Arkansas, Mississippi State, Mizzou, South Carolina, all set at six and a half wins. That is a big old lump of average in the SEC. And it's it really, I think, will be interesting to see kind of how that middle shakes out. Um, so, you know, I, I have no problem with, with, with those win totals. Um, you know, I, uh, yeah, I have no problem with those win totals. I think those are all fair. Those are all teams that are good, that have good talent, but some teams, one, just haven't gotten too far past that threshold. Um, new coaches, Hugh Freeze at Auburn, new quarterbacks, um, Kentucky, um, new coach at Mississippi State as well. Rest in peace to the Pirate. So there are all these teams that are just, I like, honestly, I look at to be average. And then Florida's at five and a half wins. It's not great to be a Florida Gator at the moment. But it's really interesting to see how big of an average middle there really is in the SEC. And I think that's just kind of, it is what it is. You know, you play in a really competitive conference. And there are teams that are coming into this season with simply just better circumstances than other teams. There are some teams like Florida or Auburn that are just dealing with a whole bunch of stuff behind closed doors, that are dealing with transitions, that are dealing with the transfer portal. And that shows up in the win total. And I don't doubt if for a single second that there's going to be one of these six and a half teams that are a pesky little, you know, competitive team throughout the throughout the season, end up winning eight or nine games, end up maybe being a giant killer. Um, hopefully not our giant, but a giant. And I wouldn't be surprised to see one of these teams, you know, in Alabama or dead Tennessee that ends up winning seven games. I don't know. I mean, crazier things have happened. So, you know, it's Vegas. Take it with a grain of salt. 
It is Vegas's job to win money. It is not Vegas's job to be right. So don't take these as Bible. This is not what is going to happen. This is simply just projections. And this is simply just Vegas playing into the trends of the masses. They're here to make money. But it is interesting. And I like to use it as a fun barometer. And I will tell you what. I am just fine with LSU's over-under win total at nine and a half. Mostly because I feel just fine with LSU hitting that over. That's going to do it for me today. Thank you for making Locked on LSU your first listen every single day. Every day is coming up tomorrow on the podcast. Transfer portal breakdown. Who has received an offer from LSU in the transfer portal? All of that coming up on tomorrow's edition of Locked on LSU.